To simplify the concept of androgen insensitivity syndrome, AIS, which was previously known as testicular feminization syndrome, you need to understand this syndrome under three banners. First, what is AIS? What is androgen insensitivity syndrome? Second, why it occurs? And third, how does it manifest? How to diagnose it? So we'll be discussing this under these headings in this short Insta lecture. So first things first, what is androgen insensitive syndrome, insensitivity syndrome? Well, it's a hormone resistance syndrome. It's an example of hormone resistance syndrome. And in that sense, it's not unique. You know, in type two diabetes mellitus, we also see that insulin, there's a resistance to the insulin's action on the receptor. It's similarly like that. It's an example of hormone resistance syndrome. So what is happening in this disorder basically that a genetically male XY, his androgen hormones are produced, but this androgen hormones cannot act properly on its target organ because the androgen receptors are defective. It's basically a, those androgen receptors become mutated and they androgen hormones cannot act on this androgen receptor. There is a resistance, end organ resistance to the androgen hormones. So what is going to happen that a genetically male XY, it will not be showing the manifestation phenotypically like a male, but it will be showing certain features of female opposite. Why it happen? I am going to explain it further details. It's very logical. You can understand it uh, through this, uh, through this logical discussion, which I'm going to do right now. So, this session, what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically discuss about the classic uh, or complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. Because if you understand that, then it's very easy to understand those partial, uh, atypical type of androgen insensitivity syndrome. So first thing first, normally what happens in a male when it is developing in embryological state, it is, it is XY. So in that XY male, it has testes and that testes around eight weeks of its embryological development, it releases, it starts to release from that two hormones from eight week onwards, of just eight week of gestation onwards. First is Mullerian inhibiting hormone, MIH. And second, they also release testosterone later. So this Mullerian inhibiting hormone and testosterone, testosterone is an example of androgen. So Mullerian inhibiting hormone, what does it do? It inhibits the Mullerian duct and development of the derivatives of the Mullerian duct. So what are the derivatives of the Mullerian duct? Uh, if you recall embryology, you know that uh, from the Mullerian duct, what develops? Develops uterus, develops fallopian tube and the upper part of the vagina. So in a, in an, in a XY male who has testes and this testes in its embryological state is releasing Mullerian inhibiting hormone. So that suppresses the Mullerian duct. So a male does not develop normally uterus, they don't, don't develop fallopian tube and they don't develop the upper part of the vagina. And that male also releases androgen that is the testosterone. And testosterone can be further converted into 5-HT. So these uh, two hormones, this testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, these two hormones, they are actually acting like an androgen. And these androgens play a role in another two important things. Testosterone plays a role in the internal uh, genitalia development, internal organ, reproductive organ development of the males, like vas deferens, uh, seminiferous tubule. Uh, on the other side, the dihydrotestosterone, they basically plays a role in the external genitalia development. So what is happening in androgen insensitivity syndrome that a fetus who has androgen insensitivity syndrome fetus having androgen insensitive syndrome, his testes at earlier phase of life, embryological state around eight weeks, would be releasing Mullerian inhibiting hormone and Mullerian inhibiting hormone would work fine because there is no resistance to action. But the androgen, which would be released from that testes in a male, that cannot work properly because androgen receptor 
androgen cannot work properly on the androgen receptor in this condition because there is a resistance to the androgen hormone action so what would happen in a androgen insensitivity syndrome male fetus when it is developing it would be having it is xy so it is having testis as it is releasing mulatinine inhibiting hormone so it would not develop like a normal male it would not develop uterus it would not develop upper part of the vagina and fallopian tube but unlike a normal male it would also not develop the internal and external male genitalia organs because androgens cannot work in this uh, this male fetus with androgen insensitivity syndrome and as androgen cannot work so their external genitalia would not develop like a male but it would look like a female so when a androgen insensitivity syndrome child is taking birth it would be a x y male who has external genitalia like female and it has testis because it's x y it has no uterus it has no fallopian tube its upper part of the vagina is missing and it has no internal or external male genitalia that is lacking also so normally on the basis of this it would be perceived as a female newborn and it would be born and brought up as a female newborn now as this individual hits the puberty what is going to happen this androgens which are there this testosterone this testosterone it would be converted into estrogen through the aromatization process and that estrogen is not opposed at all by androgen because androgen in this individual is not working at all so that estrogen would cause development of breast or the body fat distribution in that Uh, in this individual so it the so the this child would start looking like a female completely like a female that is a breast development is present there is a normal body distribution like female fat distribution like a female but uh, like there are other peer groups this child is not going to have menarche why because uh, she is missing uterus i already told you this individual's test is already released in the embryological state mullerian inhibiting hormone so when the mullerian inhibiting hormone was released mullerian inhibiting hormone was work can work normally there is no resistance to its action so mullerian inhibiting hormone or definitely they causes stop the development of the uterus so this this female ch- this child is lacking uterus so it cannot have menarche it cannot have menstrual cycle so the typical presentation of this child would be with primary amenorrhea in a child with having a female appearance uh like a female like breast development like a female like body distribution and usually the uh axillary hair and the pubic hairs would be absent or sparse why because these things require the role of androgen so as the androgen cannot work in this xy genetically male so obviously those things would not uh pubic hair or axillary hair would not be seen so now when this individual xy male comes with primary amenorrhea the test which would be done that would definitely make a sure shot diagnosis why because firstly when the ultrasound is done or be seeing that this individual is not having any uterus not having any fallopian tube not having any ovary but having testis but the testis would be located maybe abdominally or the inguinal canal abnormal location is usually seen when we do uh, his karyotyping you'll be seeing this is 46 xy when he's do his testosterone level you'll be seeing that testosterone level is usually like a boys or male range not like a female it's quite higher and a lh level would be also elevated so all these things would make a diagnosis of this condition androgen insensitivity syndrome so let us now summarize what we learned basically about the androgen insensitivity syndrome and what i discussed in this session is the classic one the complete androgen insensitivity syndrome so androgen complete androgen insensitivity syndrome is typically an x linked recessive condition because this androgen receptor gene is located on the long arm of the x chromosome and that chromosome that androgen receptor gene becomes mutated 
in this individuals so androgen is produced from the testos from the testis in this 46 xy genetically males but androgen as it cannot work on the androgen receptors so obviously what happens that androgen cannot manifest functionally so that's why they 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 are genetically male but appear as phenotypically female in their early phase embryological state they have testes it's a 46 xy genetically male their testes release mullerian inhibiting hormone and mullerian inhibiting hormone can function normally because it there is no resistance to their action so mullerian duct regresses in them so mullerian duct derivatives cannot be produced like uterus like uh, vagina upper portion or there is no development of the fallopian tube but as the androgens cannot also act so wolfian duct development also do not occur and androgens we know that testosterone and dihydrotestosterone plays an important role in the development of the internal and external genitalia development in the male so that those internal external genitalia would be missing in this syndrome patient and the gen insensitivity syndrome patient so they would not be having any epd dimis or vast difference uh, they would be not be having any external genitalia like a scrotum or uh, penis development this would not occur in this child and their external genitalia due to lack of androgen they would appear like a female external genitalia so when they are born they would be perceived as females and would be born and brought up as females Uh, and even in, during the time of puberty due to the conversion of this testosterone into the and uh, estrogen by the aromatization process they would look like apparently look like females because there would be due to the presence of estrogen there would be breast development like females there would be development of the uh, body fat distribution like females but obviously there will be no menarche no uh, menstrual cycle initiation because they don't have uterus so at that time they would be presented and when the the works up are done it will be found that they don't have uterus so they don't have fallopian tube they don't have ovary but they have testes karyotyping would reveal that they are male 46 xy and when you do that testosterone level testosterone level would be found elevated like a boy or male not unlike a female so this would prove that this is a case of androgen insensitivity syndrome thank you so much